So this one is kind of tricky. So we're going to look at the electron configurations of ions, okay? And so the rules go like this. You add, if you're trying to add electrons, we're going to add to the lowest available energy level um, that's open, okay? And then if we want to subtract, we're going to subtract from the valence electrons of the highest energy level. We're not going to take off, you know, from the, for example, if we were looking at carbon, we're not going to take off um, something from the 1s, we're going to take it off from the 2p. And that should be pretty, pretty intuitive. But the one thing that we have to notice is that transition metals, we're going to take away from the electrons from the s before we do the d. Um, and that's kind of weird because the, the 3d energy level is higher than the 4s. But for some reason we take off the s before the d. And so we'll see that um, in a couple of examples. Um, so S, so would, I'll just write out what S is, sulfur, um, sulfur would be neon, 3S2, and then 3P4, right? Um, so S minus means, well minus means it has more electrons than protons, so we added an electron. So we just added it to the highest um, energies, so the one that's available right there. Um, and S plus, when we're subtracting, right, we're going to want to subtract from something from the highest energy level. So that would be this one. And so just for clarification, what do I mean by add to the lowest available energy level? So for example, if we had 4S1, uh, 3D5, uh, we're going to want to add uh, one to there. We're only going to want to add one electron to the lower energy level of 4s1 rather than 3d5. So it would be 4s2 rather than 4s1 3d6. And that's just, you know, you'll, you'll see that later. So this would be wrong. Um, but just to make it clear, because this, we actually saw that we added um, to the highest available energy level. So you probably were thinking, oh, well, what is he talking about adding to the lowest available energy level? And this is mainly for the transition block. And we'll see that right here. So chromium, would be 4s2, 3d4, and so I kind of gave it away with the last one, um, but we'll see this right here. So that was our expected, but that's actually wrong. Right, so this is wrong. That was our expected, but this is the actual, because it was in the fourth um, family of the D block. So chromium plus, means that we subtracted the electron, right? So where will we subtract the electron from? Will we subtract it? Well, we said the rule was subtract from the highest energy level. So it should subtract from here, right? Well, remember that this is a transition metal. So we want to take it off from the S before the D. Okay, so we took it off from the 4S one before we took it off from the 3D. And for this one, we want to add to the lowest energy level. And that's what I was saying before. So instead of adding to just the one that is the highest, we want to add to the lowest energy level, and that's 4s2. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is the Bohr model of the atom. And so what is the Bohr model of the atom? All it is is um, it's, a, it's a model that we use to show different energy levels and to show that energy is quantized. Um, and quantized means that there are distinct energy levels. So this is n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. So to get from n equals 1 to n equals 2, we need a specific amount of energy to jump that. If we have any more or any less, we will not get to that energy level that we desire and it will not work. All right? So that's why energy is quantized and quantized in photons is, is an example. Um, so E, um, this is an equation that is very, very important, um, not just in chemistry but in physics. So E equals HF. And if we remember from before, or maybe if not, we, so, we know that V equals lambda F. Lambda is the wavelength, and F is the frequency, V is the speed. Okay? So that's that relation. So how can we manipulate that to put in here? Well, we can also say H equals V over lambda. So these group of equations will get you a lot of points, so commit that to memory right now. And if I didn't mention, H is Planck's constant. You don't need to know um, the number for it, you just know that it's a constant. Um, so if they give you proportions, you just know that energy is directly proportional to the frequency. 
Okay. Um, so when we go down in energy, so say we go from n equals two to n equals one, do we gain energy, absorb it, or do we release it? Um, and so that should be pretty intuitive. We release energy. So if we had something like energy was at uh, you know four thousand joules, and we went down to energy equals two thousand joules, well, where did those two thousand joules go? And you know that energy is always conserved, so it had to have been released. And going up, we have to absorb those two thousand joules in order to get to that four thousand. So it should be fairly intuitive. Um, so the next thing we're going to be talking about are excited atoms. So that's when electrons move um, from orbital, uh, their normal orbital, to a higher energy level orbital. And we'll see what I mean by that. So let's, for example, let's take uh, carbon, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, uh, right? So we had an excited carbon. What would that look like? Well, it could look like a couple of things. Um, but for example, this is one that it could that we could see, right? So we took one electron and we moved it to an even higher energy level. We moved it all the way to the three s, right? Another example could be, right? So we took now a two s electron and we moved it all the way up to the three s. But notice we never changed the number of electrons. If we count it, we have six. We count here, we have six and six here. So the number of electrons never changes. That's one thing that you have to remember is that um, there are a lot of times I'll give you examples of which one is excited, which one's not, and more than likely two out of the four will show um, electrons where they just add an entire electron right here, right? That is no longer carbon. We can't say this is carbon anymore. This is actually nitrogen, okay? And it's an excited nitrogen at that. Okay, so we can't say that, so this would be wrong, right? We can't just add a whole other electron and say that's excited. We have to take the existing number of electrons and move them to a higher energy level. Hey guys, remember to post any questions you would like us to answer in the next question of the day down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.